All right, let's talk about maturity onset diabetes of the young, or also known as MODI. So normally, here's a cell, and this is a GLUT2 channel. And normally, glucose can come in to our cells through this GLUT2 channel because it is insulin independent, right? We don't need insulin for the glucose to come through the GLUT2 channel. And once glucose comes in, it is going to be converted to glucose 3-phosphate through the enzyme glucokinase. So GK stands for glucokinase All right and this glucokinase it has a km value that is pretty moderate and the reason for this is because we don't want the activation of this enzyme if you only have low levels of glucose because it can result in hypoglycemia by the exocytosis of insulin to our bloodstream, right? And that is why it is important for this glucokinase to have a moderate KM. So let's say that normally this glucokinase gets activated around a blood sugar level of 110, right? And patients with MODI And this is a ballpark, I'm just guessing. I don't know if this is true or not, that 110 is the normal activation for glucokinase. But just to give an example, if, if, if a patient has MODI, they're going to have a uh, def uh, defect in glucokinase. So if it normally senses, if it normally a gets activated at a blood sugar level of 110, a person with MODI might um, have their glucokinase get activated around maybe 140. All right. So as you can see, this is is going to cause problems because it is going to lead to hyperglycemia because we're going to have delayed release of insulin. And here's why we have delayed release of insulin. If we take a look at this process. So glucose normally gets converted to glucose 3-phosphate and this glucose 3-phosphate is going to uh, finish glycolysis and enter the citric acid cycle or the TCA cycle and then it is going to uh, go to the electron transport chain where it is going to produce lots and lots of ATP. Normally in our cells we have these potassium channels that are where potassium can leave the cell. Once we have high levels of ATP in our cells, the ATP can inhibit these channels. So then potassium is not able to leave the cell. And what we get is high levels of potassium. When we get high levels of potassium, depolarization occurs inside the cell. Once depolarization occurs, voltage-gated calcium channels open. And once these cal voltage-gated calcium channels open, calcium is going to freely move into the cell and once calcium freely moves into the cell it is going to result in the exocytosis of insulin as well as C peptide All right and so this enzyme glucokinase is really important for the release of insulin and if we have a defect in glucokinase, like a patient who would have MODI, then this can result in hyperglycemia because it is going to result in delayed activation of glucokinase and all these downstream effects are going to be delayed and then we're going to have hyperglycemia. There are different types of uh, MODIs and some require insulin injection some don't 
um, it is a genetic disease and um, another thing that I should mention here are is um, with potassium channels over here right what class of drugs is going to inhibit these potassium channels so that potassium can't leave the cell and then we're going to have depolarization and then um, well, the opening of voltage gated calcium channels calcium flowing to the cell and the release of insulin so what group of uh, what group of drugs do this the inhibition of potassium channels these are done by sulfonylureas these are a class of drugs for type 2 diabetics all right so sulfonylureas are going to inhibit potassium channels and then we have a buildup of potassium which is going to result in depolarization opening of voltage gated calcium channels calcium flowing into the cell and finally the release of insulin as well as the c-peptide and that is all for today